is the, I guess you would say it's the third day of the cruise since we arrived in Rome on Sunday. Yesterday, on Monday, we left Rome and we are just now on Tuesday docking at uh, Livorno. Um, so Livorno is one of the ports. It is a smaller port to my understanding, so not a lot of big ships dock here. Um, and because we are a smaller ship, we're actually able to dock a whole lot closer. So the walk from off the ship to the actual port area is not as long. I've been on other cruise ships where they're bigger and they have to dock further away just because of their size, which just makes the walking from where you're docked to the port just a whole lot more um but like i said we're waking up um i had a good night's sleep i'm getting ready room was super comfortable um great temperature um the tv plays things that i was able to watch and fall asleep to and now uh, we're docking it's around 8 a.m now like 8 30 um, and we're docking at uh, livorno and we're gonna head into pisa which is a 20 minute um train ride so I'll give you a little peek of the dock so you can see how close we are um, at the port and then I uh, will check back in and give you a little look at what we're doing on the port day it's only one day here in Livorno um, on this Mediterranean um, December cruise this winter cruise so it's kind of going in coming back we may go to Luca too um, and then we have to be back on the boat around like it leaves at 7 so safest to be back at like 6 6 30. We are at the Livorno train station, so from the port we had to take a little bus, it was very short, and now we're here waiting for the train to come. It's about 13 minutes to Pisa, um, but that's what we're doing. So today is all about pizza, P pizza, pizza. We may go to Luca, uh, depending on the time, but mostly just trying to see the link on a pizza, maybe the baptistry, have a little bit of fun. Um, but yeah, good morning, good start. Got some breakfast this morning on the boat, now we're off. After a very quick train ride, we ended up in Pisa where we ended up just walking about 15 minutes towards the monuments that we wanted to see. Along the way, we saw so many great just architectural views. And as we got closer, you could see the Tower of Pisa coming into view. Upon arriving to the area, we decided to purchase the tickets and we did find out that these tickets could be purchased ahead of time on their website through Get Your Guide or through another tour company. But because it was more of the slower season, there were no lines. We walked right up and got our tickets and we're on our way. We opted on climbing up the Tower of Pisa and the first thing you have to do is actually go check your belongings into lockers as they don't allow bags or bigger things you're carrying up in the Tower of Pisa because of the narrow stairways. Tickets are timestamped, but because we got there during the slow season, there wasn't much time of waiting. We got in the line right when it was our time and we're on our way in. Jess over here signed me up to walk upstairs. We all know how I feel about stairs and walking and climbing. Um, apparently when she looked online, it said it could take about 30 minutes to walk up the stairs. How many? So, 30. That's just if you're slow. You know, if you're going slow which is me, because <laughs> we're not hightailing it upstairs. And when you immediately walk in, you do feel like you're leaving. It could be an equilibrium thing. It could be a sight thing. Immediately as I step in the building, I slid to the side and the floor and the stairs are marble. So good luck to us. After taking in the view and looking down the center of the tower, I was done with my heights and just exhilaration for the day. So it was time to head back down. As a note, when climbing up or down, the stairway is very narrow and not meant for two-way traffic. So just know that you'll have to step by the side and also make sure to wear comfortable and secure shoes as the stairs are marble and can be very slippery. After we came down, got comfortable, and gathered up our things, we headed into the Pisa Cathedral. It is very quiet and very spiritual on the inside. You do have to show your ticket upon entering, but you get to go in and see all the wonderful uh, architecture, the art, and just kind of have that serene moment. Be prepared to go in and just mellow out the sound and be comfortable and just maybe take a seat and look around. We had spent a good amount of time in there just kind of taking in the art and architecture ourselves and then we were off to the next stop. 
Next, we enter into the baptistry, which isn't very large. You can kind of walk around in a circle, again, see the architecture, see some of the tombs that are inside. It's probably a time where you can spend about 10 or 15 minutes in there looking around, but because it's not very huge, it's one of those quick ins and outs. Lastly, we step into the Camposanto, which translates to monumental cemetery or old cemetery. Camposanto is cemetery, where you're basically walking around on tombs underneath you, where you can see a lot of various people from the area and how they were buried there. A lot of the people who are buried there are from the Third Crusade, some archbishops, as well as some other famous legendary people who were buried in that area. seeing the tower, the Camposanto, the baptistry, and the cathedral, we decided to make our way back to the train station, but not very quickly. It was just time to walk around, which is always a great thing to do when you're traveling. Along our way, we found some food, some drinks, just sat and enjoyed our time to take a break from traveling, and then just kept walking through the different villages and areas and streets to find unique finds. On our way back, we stumbled into Knight Square where we also found the Palazzo della Coravana, which just had a beautiful architecture. We had to stay in the square and just look at all of the buildings, take it in, take a break, and of course, take some pictures. And then back towards the train station, we ended up with a little Christmas village where we decided to stop, do some local vendor shopping, and of course, take a little ride on the carousel. We just decided to go ice skating. We have a little Christmas market here in Pisa, right when you got the train. Uh, I decided not to, which was probably a good idea on my end, because they're saying it's, it's quite yeah, bad. Yeah, the skates are really rough. Like, I've been skating my whole life, and even when I get in rental skates like this, they're terrible quality, so I can barely do anything. So if you out there think that you suck at ice skating, it's probably because when you're going ice skating, you're getting rental skates, and they're absolutely terrible. So just making you all feel better out there. So I'm standing on the outside with all the equipment. <laughs> <laughs> Why did, that is the end of the day in Pisa. We are about to catch the train back to head back to Livorno when we're gonna get back on the boat and then we are off and this is our last day in Italy. Uh, if you saw all the other videos or you've seen the cruise video, uh, we started in Rome for two days, had one day at the Livorno port, which you can go to Lucca, Pisa or Florence for a full day. Um, it is about five o'clock and we're ending the day. We started the day at nine leaving the Livorno port, but that is the end. So as always, if you enjoyed this video and you want to see more things, especially to keep up with the rest of the ports, because this is just port two, we've got three more ports to go and five more days of this trip. So make sure to hit that subscribe button and stay connected and I will catch you all next time. <laughs>